The 902 pipe and cable locator may come packaged in a larger system called the Model 902 Subscanner Locating System. This system is capable of all of the locating tasks of the standard 902 system. In addition, it is capable of finding unknown lines by simply scanning the area in question. Shown here, the 902 subscanner system includes the model 902 pipe and cable locator, the model 902 subscanner carriage, an accessory box which contains a ground rod and a large direct connection cable and a large sturdy plastic carrying case. In addition, the subscanner system may include any of the optional accessories that might be included in the smaller systems. Assembly of the subscanner system is fast and straightforward. To open the carriage accessory from its storage position, first loosen the large swivel knob, turning counterclockwise until a stop is reached. Now, slightly separate the carriage arms and open the carriage as if it were a large jackknife. At the end of their travel, the carriage arms will lock into the proper position. Tighten the swivel knob so that it is snug. Be careful not to over tighten the knob. Now, place the receiver box into the top clamp, roughly centered in the clamp base. Snap the receiver box in place using the cam lock. Then, insert the connection plug from the subscanner carriage into the headphone jack on the receiver face panel. Rotate the carriage and place the transmitter in the lower clamp as shown, with the control panel facing outward. Snap the cam lock over the edge of the transmitter box to hold it in place. The subscanner is now ready to use. To activate the subscanner, first power up the transmitter on low and make sure that the pulse feature is off. The subscanner will not function properly if the pulse feature of the transmitter is active. Next, turn on the receiver with its sensitivity set to low. Set the signal level knob to point to the seventh reference line, or 12 o'clock. Holding the subscanner at your side, press the auto set button on the carriage. If the auto set lamp does not light, then press the auto set button again. Hold the subscanner carriage steady while the auto set lamp is flashing.
Within 15 to 20 seconds, the response of the receiver will vanish and the auto set lamp will stop flashing. The subscanner is now operational. To search for an underground line, walk straight through the area you wish to search. The direction that you walk should be roughly at a right angle to the direction of the underground lines you expect to find. When the subscanner passes over a pipe or a cable, the receiver will respond. Walk through the signal area until the receiver ceases to respond. The line or lines are located roughly in the center of this signal response area. To pinpoint the location of a line, back into the signal area and adjust the signal level knob appropriately to peak the response of the receiver over the line. To determine the direction of the line, rotate the subscanner around the transmitter position when the system is peaked above the line. The receiver's response will peak when the transmitter box is aligned with the underground line. The subscanner system is also capable of finding buried metallic masses such as valve caps, buffalo boxes, or manhole covers. In fact, the subscanner system is quite sensitive when used as a metal locator. To find metallic masses, hold the carriage by the short rear handle so that the receiver rests flat and below the transmitter. Reset the system by pressing the auto set button and waiting for the auto set lamp to stop flashing. Now, survey the area where you wish to search for a buried mass, keeping the receiver box level and roughly at the same height at which it was when the subscanner was set. The receiver will respond when it passes over a metal Adjust the signal level control on the receiver to peak the response over the mass. If the system peaks over a roughly circular area, then it is likely that it has located a buried mass. To verify that the subscanner has indeed found a mass of metal, rotate the system around the receiver in a full circle. If the response of the receiver remains constant, you have almost certainly found a buried mass of metal. After the locating job is complete, disassemble the system by simply reversing the assembly steps. Remove the plug from the headphone jack, release the upper cam lock, and remove and deactivate the receiver box. Rotate the carriage so that the transmitter rests flat in its clamp base. Release the lower cam lock and deactivate and remove the transmitter box. Now loosen the large swivel knob on the carriage by turning it counterclockwise until it stops. Place the plug cable in its storage cavity and bring the arms of the carriage together as if closing a jackknife. Gently tighten the swivel knob to lock the carriage in its storage position. The Model 902 systems have been designed for durability and low maintenance. Therefore, little more maintenance than changing batteries need be done for the 902 transmitter, receiver, and subscanner carriage. All three of these instruments have lamp indicators which monitor the strength of their batteries.
For the 902 transmitter and receiver, the batteries have become weak when the battery monitor lamp does not light. When this happens, change the batteries in the receiver as follows. Remove the four Phillips head screws located at the corners of the receiver's face panel. Slide the blue outer shell away from the face panel and face the interior of the panel toward you. Now remove the two screws in the battery cover that secures the batteries in place. Replace the batteries with four alkaline C size cells, being careful to insert them according to the instructions inside the battery cavity. Screw on the battery cover and turn on the instrument to assure that the batteries have been properly installed. Replace the blue shell and secure it with the four Phillips head screws. Because the 902 transmitter is physically similar to the receiver, changing the transmitter batteries is essentially the same. Remove the outer blue shell and remove the battery cover from the compartment inside the face panel. Following the instructions inside the battery cavity, replace the batteries with four alkaline C cells. Check the operation of the transmitter and then replace the blue shell. When the battery inside the subscanner carriage has become weak, the red battery monitor lamp will light. To replace the battery, remove the small Phillips head screw from the carriage arm directly below the condensed instruction label. Pry away the battery cover at the small indentation next to the receiver clamp base. Remove the old battery from the snap-on lead and replace it with a 9-volt alkaline or lithium transistor battery. Put the connected battery into the arm cavity and replace the cover, screwing it down. The subscanner carriage is ready for use.